Good morning, everybody. This is Daniel with Peace and Plenty Farms, and uh, this is the uh, incubator that we've got the um, eggs going in one of those uh, styrofoam incubators. I don't recommend those styrofoam incubators. They're very unreliable, but I feel like I've got a lot of broodies uh, coming along, and we'll be switching over to broody hens pretty soon. So this is probably the second to the last time I'm going to use this uh, styrofoam maybe in the spring but um, I've got another set of eggs I've got a set of eggs in there right now probably about 12 or 15 and they are due to hatch somewhere around the first of December now today is November the 26th the day after Thanksgiving Black Friday and uh, for you shoppers but um, as soon as these eggs hatch I'm going to uh, put another batch in now I've got them in there on the uh, counter and uh, they're probably two weeks old the right you know they say three weeks is about the maximum I guess but I'm gonna try it out and see um, I've got them stacked in there by date so I'll put them in there and I'll be able to tell how far out I can pick eggs up and then put them in the incubator but um, it's about lunchtime and I'm getting ready to head down to um, Richmond and pick up a tow dolly I've wanted a, a two-wheel tow dolly for the um, for the back of the uh, T100 so that I can pick up and move cars around. Uh, we drive paid-for junk, stuff I get from the junkyard. And when somebody gives me something, here lately I've been able to patch them up and drive them home. But I want to be able to get parts cars, and I have some here that need to be hauled away. So... Uh, a tow dolly is something I've been looking for and somebody has one down in Richmond I've made several trips out to pick up tow dollies and I get there and they're totally bent up unusable or the tires are flat or the lights are completely missing just destroyed and they want you know on like a new price for them one lady I drove two hours I got to the exit to turn off and uh, she texted me that she had sold it to somebody else. So it's real aggravating dealing with the uh, Craigslist marketplace kind of stuff. I just don't have the time for it. I was going to buy a new one, but I thought I'd give uh, one more person a try. So we'll see how that works out. But I wanted to go over the uh, rabbits. I've been working on those this morning, rearranging their um, birthing boxes with the electric uh, heating pads. Last time, we, the model number, I wasn't able to get it to you because... Um, so here it is today. I'm going to give it to you. I don't know. Let's see if I can get you to see that. Pardon me. My business phone is ringing. Okay. So there's the uh, heating pad. The one that stays on. Uh, it, this one here will stay on uh, all night. It stays on for days. So the, the uh, Con Air. There's the model number and some more information on it so that you can order you can have this type of heating pad because most of the time they they turn off as soon as you um well 10 minutes or something i don't know safety feature but i moved everybody around today so this is uh this uh doe had buck male a on 11 1 so she's due on 11 29 and today's the 26th so i'm actually ahead of schedule now i got way behind schedule uh a few weeks ago we actually lost some but I'm up, up to speed up to schedule today on on this so she's due 1129 I've got the heating pad in I've got it ready to plug in I'm gonna wait a couple of days and then this is a uh, male buck D and he was in there on the 22nd so 28 days would be 1119 that she's due now she looked like she was have you know giving birth this morning just the way she was acting so i'm going to wait one more day and put her and see and then we'll put her with a, another male i'll show you that uh, situation in a minute but we are having trouble with uh, mites in one of uh one of the uh, does ears so this is the uh, apple cider vinegar and olive oil in here and that that knocks it right out usually uh two treatments three or four days apart we'll we'll take care of that so let's move along we've got uh, male d here on the 26th and she's due on the 23rd so she's got the pad all in there ready to go 
I stocked up everybody's hay. I mean straw, straw. Straw is better for their uh, digestive system. So here we again, we've got the D due the 27th. Uh, we've got the fresh straw in there. Now this is unthrashed stall, uh, straw. So it hasn't been thrashed. You can see the um, seeds are still in there. And I guess I prefer this for the animals because the uh, chickens come along and they'll work on those uh, seeds and the uh, rabbits seem to eat them. So that's fine. But one thing I learned the hard way, do not put this unthrashed straw over your strawberries in the wintertime. <coughs> Excuse me. It's <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so dry from... Uh, putting all this straw in here I'm going to do a quick video and get some lunch and something to drink but you do not want to put this straw on the strawberries because the uh, seeds will uh, they are merciless <laughs> they are hateful it took me many many hours of pulling weeds to get that um, rye straw seed out of the um, strawberry patch but they say put straw, put, put straw on strawberries. That's what makes the taste so good. That's why they call them strawberries. But don't put unthrashed straw on them, whatever you do. So we're coming along here. We've got a couple little ones here that uh, I think there's four that made it in this one. And I do put this piece of plywood in there to uh, keep them from squeezing out. I've tried several different things, but... It just ended up being this piece of plywood. So if you see a piece of plywood, that means that there's babies in there and they're at the age where they can climb out. Now this is male D in here. And mainly what I want to tell you about is a new uh, mating idea that I've come up with on the uh, rabbits. We have not been having very successful uh, mating. It's just uh, one out of three or four is all we've, we've had. So I've got another... Um, idea here this is a cute little bunch and um, what I'm gonna do is I just have to show you these little ones one of them down in there you can see is not as healthy as the others so there's five in there where probably typically I don't see those ones that are the runt uh, like that making it so here we are, the last, the 12th cage, end of what we call the row houses, due on 1129. But what I want to show you is over here, I just put these males in here. This is uh, male C, and she's really uh, avoiding him. Look at this, look at this female. She's down underneath of, underneath of the wire for the straw, and this female over here is totally avoiding him also. So, what I'm going to do is typically I leave the males in there for three or four days. We been we had we haven't been having very much luck with the uh, mating, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these three males tomorrow over to the other cages, and for three or four days I'm just going to switch them back and forth from this cage to that cage, and that way it's sort of like tabletop mating where you take the male and the female out and put them together for a few minutes and then put them away but um, that hasn't been working for me lately so I think I'm going to instead of just leaving them in there three or four days I'm going to switch them every day for three days between another group and mix them up so like I did B here I did A right here and I did C right here next time I'll do uh, B here, and then, and then the last time I'll do A, and that'll be three days in a row. And that'll give me an opportunity to try to help my odds on the uh, mating. It just hasn't been very uh, successful here lately. So we have another little group over here. Three made it here, and they're doing pretty well. <laughs> Their eyes, I think they're about a day or two open. They're probably old enough where I could actually hold them, but this is going to be a quick video. I'm going to uh, head on out to um, pick up the um, dolly, and I've got to get on the road for that. So 
I'll probably do a video of that when I get back, you know, show you what I got and we'll do a wrap up video for today. But this morning has been putting plywood in to protect them, coming up with a new uh, mating uh, scheme to mix them up. Now the other three are on this side and unfortunately they're at the top, but um, I've, I've got a ladder rigged up and um, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm not going to want to, but I'm going to have to climb up there and switch the males out every day to try to increase my success rate because this is the last opportunity that I have when uh, 1st of December is really the end of um, my mating opportunity in this area because it gets too cold in January. They're, they wouldn't have successful births in January and I don't want to be fighting the cold and everything all the way through January, February. We'll just take... Um, take a couple months off and we can get started up again real soon we've got plenty of other things we can do around here well unfortunately the trash is in the video one more time I do have the truck I did pick up all the sticks and I was gonna load this trash uh, but the carburetor is messing up so I've got to get that fixed the trucks in the in the barn but I thought I'd bring you over here and let you see uh, how the um, the silky chicks are doing real quick they're growing plenty fast enough here we'll put them over pretty soon and I want to tell you another funny thing going on over here we call it hopping mad mr. silky has a personality and one of them is hopping mad yesterday he got stuck inside the um, silky FEMA camp area right there and he could not get out all of the other silkies got out off of that uh, diving board is what I call it I have it up high so the rabbits can't get into the uh, silky area so all of the silky chicks were out here and he was in stuck inside and man he was having a fit but he finally figured out how to get out and uh, for the rest of the day, he was chasing everything around. He was chasing me. And when he does, when he's chasing, he hops. His, his two little legs are just hopping around. And uh, he's giving everybody the what for. And nobody dare challenge him when he's uh, in one of his hopping mad moods. But uh, they must have settled down. The silkies must have settled down somewhere. I don't know where they're at. Way in the back somewhere. But I want to thank everybody for watching and I'll give you a wrap-up video later on today on the dolly okay we're getting down to the end of the day here and I'm up here by the uh, black Morans the rooster is over here to see what I'm doing that is one amazing rooster it's the biggest rooster I've ever had around here but uh, let's take a look at what uh, we've been doing today I went out and uh, picked up this dolly. It's amazing uh, people on the uh, Craigslist and Marketplace, those kind of things. Most of them are lying to you. They won't you know, stick to their word. I stayed in really close communication with this guy telling him I was coming, when I was coming, how far away I was, everything. And I get there and there's some other guys there wanting to buy the dolly but thankfully uh, we got it straightened out he had accidentally communicated with uh, two different people thinking that he had the same ones on the way so appreciated him holding it for me till I got there these things are about two thousand dollars new uh, most of them nowadays have brakes and all that on them but um, I really didn't need that I just do light towing with it and uh, I got this one for $750. The tires are in good shape. The lights work. So this will be good for us. I use it mainly to go pick up parts cars to um, if someone gives us a car or I get something at a really good deal. You've got to be able to jump right then. When something comes up, somebody says, hey, I've got a car. Get it out of my yard. You've got to be able to go right then. You can't call a tow truck and mess around with those guys and you know get delayed and everything somebody else is going to get it when people give you a car you've got to have the tools and the equipment to go get it right then so that's why I spent the money on this plus when um, any of our other vehicles break down whether it's Nathan's or Ingrid's or even mine 
the uh, Ranger broke down in Maryland and uh, I had to abandon it and leave it there. I, it wasn't worth the tow bill to bring it home. But if I had had this, I could have, um, I could have just brought it home with this because it was almost two hours away. And the tow bill was way more than the Ranger. So I lost the Ranger because I didn't have this. The uh, drawback to the trip was, like I was saying in the other video, I took the uh, bed off trying to figure out where the leak was in the uh, rear end. I thought it was the gas tank, but it turned out to be the rear end. So I got a seal and it was very easy to, to change the seal and put another one on. But um, it leaked oil all the way there. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell on that bumper. If uh, we had smell-o-vision here, you could smell the burnt oil, but there's oil all over the back of the um, truck, all over the back of the T100, all over the paint and everything. So I stopped at Jeff's uh, on the way back, Jeff's uh, Ladysmith uh, Automotive, and um, he didn't have any idea. So I'm going to YouTube it tonight and see why or what. I, I really didn't pay attention when I took the the old seal out because when I pulled it out it was it was ripped and torn and in pieces and I said well there's my problem I hammered in a new one put the yoke back on and just stuck the drive shaft bolted the drive shaft back on I didn't inspect it really close I was sure that I had the problem but apparently I didn't so we lost oil everywhere I did go by his name is also Jeff and picked up the feed so feed now is up to uh, $26 for the pigs and $34 for the uh, layer, uh, hen layer feed. So things are starting to inch up in price. I noticed uh, somebody said that today's um, Friday, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and I saw where they, they uh, checked the prices of the cost of Thanksgiving meal, and it was 10% higher this year than it was last year, 10% inflation in one year. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The truck drove real well other than that. Um, I could smell the oil coming out of the uh, U-joint because it was splashing onto the uh, muffler and burning. So that makes an interesting smell. But the truck's nice and cleaned up and uh, ran real well. So I'm going to unhook the dolly here and uh, swing around and, and fill up the um, trash cans over there for the uh, pigs. And then maybe even put a couple bags in for the um, uh, sheep and the uh, goats. I spent $100 at um, the hardware store for goat and sheep feed and chick feed and $200 for pig feed and chicken layer feed. So this place is turning into a zoo. So hopefully we can hatch some more of these um, black Moran eggs. I've got them um, in the incubator and I've got about two weeks supply waiting to go into the incubator once, um, once they come out and they should be coming out in a couple of days. I wanted to walk over here because the uh, sheep are laying over here. We just have to check them out. I'm going to uh, zoom in on them a little bit. Daisy is due any day. Uh, no, Sophie is due any day, and that's the goat. Sophie the goat. I think she's due probably in a week or two. And uh, Daisy right there is due um, in two months, three months, something like that. Well, I really appreciate everybody watching, and uh, remember, it's about the harvest. I was out here cleaning up, getting ready to um, you know, fill the cans with feed. And it's about a half hour, 45 minutes before I put them to bed with their feed. And the sheep are all standing out here. They know that at 4.30, 5 o'clock, which it's dark at 4, at 5.15, I come out of that gate and I turn right and I head towards their place. And they're all facing that direction, looking that direction and looking at me and looking back at that direction saying, let's go. We want our feed. They've kind of moved around a little bit, but they were all pointing that way and looking over here. They're definitely ready for their feed. I don't. I can't believe the goats aren't over here already. They're usually here by now. The chickens are waiting for their special feed. 
they get cooked oats in the evening and uh, sometimes they get those um, sunflower seeds 100% organic sunflower seeds a couple of those every evening that really helps out with the uh, egg shell quality and color of the yolk thank you for watching